Zeta Jones, Mel Gibson, Gwyneth Paltrow, all targets of celebrity stalkers. But increasingly, instead of running and hiding, the famous are fighting back. Tennis pro Anna Kornikova was even willing to submit to a cross-examination by her stalker as she sought and won a permanent restraining order against him. What motivates a stalker? Why do they become so obsessed? Here's John Larson. Anyone who's anyone seems to have one. Nicole flirted with me, and then I tried to respond. Well, then she shouldn't have flirted with me. A fan who turns disturbingly fanatic. He's um, maybe a little crazy. I don't know. He's, he's like in love with me. I don't know. In a world obsessed with fame, the downside for the famous is the vulnerability that sometimes comes with it. Just recently, a convicted stalker was charged with plotting to kidnap David Letterman's son. He's pled not guilty. Frank, you have anything to say to David Letterman? Please step back, sir. Before that, this woman stalked Letterman for years. God bless America. Madonna, Gwyneth, Catherine, Cheryl, Brad, Hallie, all have been stalked. And now experts say for every one celebrity stalker you've heard about, there are at least 20 more that have gone unreported. Detective Jeff Dunn heads the LAPD unit that deals with stalkers. At all the cases you've seen, is there any most likely target? In other words, the really beautiful celebrity or somebody who's really friendly on television. No, you'd be surprised. You would think that that would be the case, but literally anybody that's in the public's eye can generate this type of unwanted attention. In actress Rebecca Schaefer's case, one fan's obsession turned deadly. Schaefer, who starred in the sitcom My Sister Sam, was shot by Robert Bardo in 1989 on the front steps of her apartment building. This. And it's only been since Schaefer's murder that law enforcement and other criminal experts have begun understanding the celebrity stalker profile. What exactly is going through their minds? They have criminal histories. Typically, they've had some involvement with drug abuse, and they also have psychiatric disorders. So they are multi-problemed individuals. Reed Malloy is a forensic psychologist who has written extensively about stalking behavior. Celebrity stalker will typically be a male about age 39 who's had a history of failed relationships. Typically, he's average or brighter than average, underemployed, and has a lot of time on his hands. It takes a lot of time to stalk. They are often extremely self-absorbed, says Malloy, and see strong connections between themselves and their celebrity, even when there aren't any, as in the case of this man, who was accused of stalking singer Sheryl Crow. I just feel it is unexplainable closeness, similarity, similar wavelength. And this may surprise you. Often it's not so much that the stalker is in love with the celebrity, but that the stalker honestly believes the celebrity is in love with him or her. How do you as a detective intervene on someone with a thought disorder? Uh, they, they know that to be a fact. They know that Madonna's in love with them. What can I tell them that's going to convince them otherwise? And this Very obviously, they've never met Madonna, never had a conversation with Madonna, but right. they're convinced. They're convinced. And in this fantasy, the stalkers can often feel betrayed. In Florida, a homeless man who was accused of stalking posted a note on tennis star Anna Kornikova's website ordering her to drop all her current boyfriends and spend all her time with him, according to court documents. He was arrested after he turned up naked in her neighbor's backyard. Was that you, sir? I see no reason to deny it. Yes, I'm not denying it. No. And were you, in fact, nude? I was sunbathing, nude sunbathing. And uh, were you there because you thought it was Anna Kornikova's house? Yes. Cheryl Crow's accused stalker, Ambrose Capos, connects himself to her by taking the epic story of the Odyssey and becoming Odysseus rescuing his Penelope. Like the damn stalkers and harassers that, that, that are constantly lurking in, in Cheryl's life. And if I am Odysseus, and I'm going to take that freaking bow and I'm going to string it, I'm going to shoot it right through the freaking brains. And then all hell is going to break loose. And the suitors will be wiped clean of the f***ing courtyard. And Penelope and her Odysseus will be home. Though he was acquitted of all charges, 
he exhibited a trait that is often associated with celebrity stalkers. It's like he's thinking about he's going to be the good guy, and he doesn't see that he's the stalker. Absolutely. That's a great example of this rescue fantasy, which I've found to be very common in celebrity stalkers. And the irony is that they're the ones that are creating the threat. Kapos later admitted that he had been delusional when he thought he was communicating telepathically with Sheryl Crow. There's also the stalker who is in love, but someone is getting in the way. That's believed to be the motive for the woman who stalked Catherine Zeta-Jones. Catherine Zeta-Jones. Okay. Ironically, her stalker wasn't really after her. The focus on that particular stalker was Michael Douglas. Catherine Zeta-Jones was perceived to be an impediment to this relationship that the stalker had perceived with Michael Douglas. Zeta-Jones stalker Dawnette Knight pled guilty, and the case ended without violence. But it's not always that way. What usually tips it from, I love you, to I'm going to hurt you? The tipping is rejection and humiliation. In the case of Rebecca Schaefer, when she played a role in this movie, scenes from the class struggle in Beverly Hills, it tipped the balance. Her stalker murderer, Robert Bardo, was not happy with what he saw. She did a semi-nude scene laying in bed, and this individual, Mr. Bardo, didn't think that was in keeping with her My Sister Sam character. And that raised his ire. Following Schaefer's death, Los Angeles police formed a special unit that includes mental health experts to deal with stalking. Dunn believes if they'd had it back in 1989, it would have saved Schaefer's life. I'm 100% convinced that Rebecca Schaefer would still be alive today. There were a lot of red flags or a lot of telltale signs about the behavior leading up to her murder that could have been interve intervened with. But with all the progress being made in understanding stalkers, Prosecuting them is difficult, and sometimes things can get a little creepy. When tennis star Anna Kornikova went to court, trying once and for all to be rid of her tormentor, she was forced to answer questions from the very man she was trying to get away from, who was representing himself. Why is it that you and your team did not uh, address the author of the letters? I don't, didn't want to encourage um, any kind of... Um, Connection between me and that person. Anybody who watches a stalker represent himself or herself in court and get a chance to actually talk to, interview, grill the person who he or she has been stalking mm -hmm. can sense that there's something wrong here. Mm -hmm. Something, yes. it, it's almost like nirvana for them. Absolutely. Typically, a stalker of a celebrity figure, when he's in trial, this will be the closest he's ever been to his celebrity victim. <laughs> And stalking is difficult to prove. Britney Spears got a restraining order against a Japanese man who, according to court documents, wrote her letters, showed up at her houses, and sat in the front row for dozens of her concerts. But he doesn't necessarily get convicted as a stalker. Why not? Well, here in California, and as is in most states, you have to have a credible threat associated with this type of behavior. And as disturbing and as alarming as following her to 37 concerts and trying to approach her at, you know, three or four different residences may be, unless you have something you can hang your hat on in the way of a credible threat, you haven't satisfied the elements of stalking as far as California is concerned. Detective Dunn and his team came up with a creative solution for Brittany, asking federal agents to put the Japanese man, who says he is not a stalker, on a no-fly list barring him from entering the United States. And sadly, it is the most dangerous stalkers who go down in history linked forever with the object of their obsession. We can think of the famous stalkers, whether it was Hinckley who shot President Reagan or Chapman who shot John Lennon. I mean, these people did achieve the notoriety that maybe they were looking for. Yeah, a great irony is that you have an individual who said before he shot uh, President Reagan, that he wanted to be linked with Jodie Foster forever and that through this act perhaps he could do that and he did accomplish that. Brad Pitt recently said in an interview that living behind walls is getting to him, that he wishes he could just sit on the front lawn and watch traffic go by. The trade-off of fame is the loss of a regular life. Celebrities know that and pay for extra protection which they need. But as dangerous as celebrity stalkers can be, Reed Malloy says the most dangerous stalker is the one you know, usually an ex-spouse, boyfriend, or girlfriend. But whether you're in the movies or just watch them at home on TV, his advice is the same. The great mistake that people make 
is they don't contact the police and they think they're going to handle it themselves by reasoning with the stalker. This is not reasonable behavior. This is done by an unreasonable person and you're not going to manage it through any kind of rational communication. That's all for this edition of Dateline Sunday. A reminder, we'll see you again for a special edition of Dateline Wednesday at 8, 7 central. I'm Stone Phillips, and for all of us at NBC News, good night.